right, guys, let's take a look at the internet weather for this week. So the top 10 most probed ports. In first place, Telnet. Uh, 8545 is the Ethereum GF daemon, I believe. Uh, 22 TCP is SSH. 445 is SMB. That's coming in fourth. 1433 is uh, MS SQL. 3389 TCP is Remote Desktop Protocol, followed by 80, which is all sorts of web stuff. 8080, which is all sorts of other different web stuff. Uh, 6379, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And 21 TCP is FTP. Going on to the most sources probing, 445 is at the top of that list. Actually, this surprised me. I went and double checked my numbers, but the top 10 ranks didn't change. Didn't change. Wow. Not at all from last week, which is incredible. I've never seen that, except for the 21 TCP bumping back into the, the 10th spot. That's kind of unusual to see sort of, you know, even the, you know, even the top five being in the same position. We had the top, I think, nine this week that were showing the exact same position as last week. So that was interesting. Uh, 23 TCP, we talked about Telnet, 8080 is other weird web stuff, um, often IoT devices. Uh, 5431 is another UPnP port. Um, 80 TCP is HTTP. 80 ICMP is echo requests, so someone is scanning, looking just for the existence of host, usually just to say, does the host exist or not? Uh, 5555 is Android ADB debug bridge. 6881 is BitTorrent. 81 TCP is another one of those web ports that also gets some IoT use. And 21 TCP is FTP. So let's get into it. 3333. This one did not make it into our top 10, but since we talked about it in Satori Botnet, I figured I would bring it up. So this is a 15-day chart, and the story that we covered showed that this port is being scanned to find exposed uh, mining rigs running the Claymore software, which has a real code execution bug. And most of the sources are from Mexico. There's one major source in the Netherlands, but the majority of sources for the scanning activity are from Mexico, from a single uh, uh, network owned by a single provider, most likely because they have the GPON routers that were also mentioned in our story. Uh, so in the last seven days or so, it has been trending back downwards. But you can see that on the 13th, there was a significant spike. Uh, 23 Telnet, it's sort of weird to see this, that it's, it's decreased so significantly. So there was sort of an uptick in the last couple of days, but um, around the 16th, it fell to around 50,000 scan sources per hour. And that's, that's kind of pitiful considering how high it's been in the last uh, 90 days. So, I mean... I suppose it's a good thing that there's no longer as much scanning, but I don't think scanning overall has decreased. I think it's just been retargeted elsewhere. 445 still continues to slowly trend upwards, which is concerning. Yeah, I feel like until people are, are, are patching against Eternal Blue and that family of vulnerabilities, we're gonna keep seeing this grow. Well, we just uh, celebrated the one year anniversary of Eternal Blue. The public release of Eternal yeah. Blue. <laughs> <laughs> this is true, yeah. Yeah, so continues to continues to grow. Uh, I wanted to go back to port 2000 TCP, which is the MicroTik routers that had a vulnerability maybe a month or so ago. And 2000 wasn't actually the place where the vulnerability existed, but it was a good uh, indicator for whether or not you're actually connecting to a MicroTik router. That has dropped almost to nothing. And this is a 60-day view of it. You see it spiked all the way up to 120,000 scan sources per hour, and now we're down to less than 10,000. So. Again, I think this is part of maybe one of the Satori or Mirai variants retasking itself to look at other ports. Uh, port 8545 we talked about is that GF, Ethereum, JSON RPC port. That's another one of those ports where they've got a, it's just an, an admin interface that you shouldn't be putting on the internet. We've seen a, a significant spike in interest in that port, I'd say around the 12th or 13th of this month. Uh, 5555 is, you know, it's wavering somewhere around 7,000 scan sources per hour, uh, but, you know, not really going any much, much of anywhere. It looks like a, a daily cycle there. Uh, 6379 Redis we've talked about a couple weeks ago. I want to take a look at that one as well. And by default, Redis doesn't authenticate anybody connecting to it. So about a month ago, there was uh, a campaign against these Redis um, machines. Uh, crypto jacking campaign. So it seems like this has been trending upwards ever since. If the article was published in March, which is the far left of that graph, uh, it's only gone up from there. And one of the ones that we saw on our own reports of the, the baselines for ports changing significantly was this Kubernetes port. 
uh, this 10250, again, another port that is strongly suggested you do not put on the internet, um, but it seems like someone is interested in that. Scan flows peaking out actually in the last 24 hours around, um, I want to say 35 million, uh, but this is only a handful of sources in, the Swe in Sweden and the Netherlands, so it's not a huge botnet, but somebody is definitely uh, dedicated to scanning for it. And one more from that report, um, 17185 TCP, which I had never heard of before. Um, the first significant spikes that we've seen on this port are in the last 90 days. I mean, it was mostly quiet until this window here. It was actually 15 days, uh, but then it, the scan sources jumped up to 180 uh, per hour. And this is another one of those interesting ports that you shouldn't expose to the internet. This one has a, it's a debug service for VxWorks, which is, it's uh, an embedded operating system. It's a lot like embedded Linux, but it's, it's just different enough. And a VxWorks sells this. Not sure what the, the, the point of it is yet, but no one seems to have weaponized it. Otherwise, I would expect to see a trend upwards on this. I would expect there to be you know, some growth in the scanning population, but there hasn't been too much. There's more out there than just what's in our top 10. Understanding what you're exposing on your network and not just what ports are available, but what's the implication? What does that mean when you've got a port 17020? Why do I care that it's, that it's exposed to the internet? Really understanding what sort of software is there, what processes are running, and what abilities that gives you. 